Hope you enjoy this episode brought to you by our sponsors, Mint Mobile. Click the link in the episode description to switch to Mint Mobile for as low as $15 a month and save big on unlimited talk, text, 5G LTE data plans. Enjoy the episode. One of the most potent antidepressants is an orgasm. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Relationship Theory. I am your co-host, Tom Bilyeu, and I am here with the most lovely woman on the face of the planet, my wife, Lisa Bilyeu. And today, we're talking about sex. So, <laughs> without further ado, so you have a question for us. I do, Let's hear you're it. so cute. Um, what do you think about the idea of no sex before marriage? All right. Let, let's see if I can nuke the comment the section. The funny thing is, I was like, this is a three-second episode. <laughs> for me, it's very easy. I think it's madness. I think it's madness. And I get it. For a long time, I was committed to the idea of not having sex before marriage. So this isn't like somebody... I did not get laid in high school. I was absolutely god-awful with women for a very long time. Um, and looking at the realities of sex, it is such an important part of the relationship and there are there are just matches and not matches and not finding out until after the fact whether you're a match or not just seems crazy to me now that's my best relationship advice is to i think people should have sex before they get married for sure i don't think they should marry the first person they have sex with i know people are going to hate all of this (laughs) <laughs> and I think that um, they should live together before they get married. I think though that's just like, if you said, okay, Tom, look, I get it. There are spiritual reasons. I'm all for it. Cool. People can ignore this advice. I totally understand. Everybody needs to do what is right for them. I'm just saying, if you're asking me, hey, this marriage has to last. What's your best practices? So not that I'm not judging. People do what they want. But my best practices for finding a mate and making sure that you're going to have longevity would be to definitively not marry the first person you have sex with, definitely have sex with the person that you get married before you get married, and live together. Because it is complicated, man. Which is interesting because a third one, we didn't really properly live together, just me and you. What? That, yeah, sure. But Sort of. But here's the thing. We live together in... It was... We learned a lot once we got married and properly lived together. It's like yes. me staying with you for a couple of months, you staying and living with my mom and me. Okay. It's like, it's, so you know, I agree with you. Would though. you say those were more or less stressful? Living with your mom it's, versus was, living on our I own? Don't, I don't think we waste the episode going down that path, but it was night and day. It wasn't even necessarily what's more, it was just, it was night and day. It's because I didn't know to how me, to- To me, it's about stress I didn't testing. know how to cook myself. I didn't know how to do laundry. And now I have to do it for two people. And so it became, for me, that went from living with my mom, with you, when my mom did everything, and we like, she bought the groceries, she did all our laundry, to me and you moving in, just me and you. So are you and saying now, that you wish we had lived together for longer before we got married? Yeah. Would that- So that might be good best practices. So that's what I was saying. Sorry, so you missed the point. What I was saying was, it's interesting that you say that because we didn't, but I 100% agree we should have. So maybe I didn't, it's interesting because we could film this, so maybe I didn't say that out loud. No, no, I just jumped in too soon before you could finish your point. So that's where I was going, is that I completely agree. So, but going back to the, so in a What do you think about the next thing then that I'll say? Most people probably shouldn't get married before they're 30. And that you definitely shouldn't have kids before you're 30. It's a, I don't now want to get off really this. Yeah, I don't want to get off the subject of the sex though yet because it's so powerful. That's true. Sex before you're married. Um, so right. So here's the thing. I completely agree with you, and I understand what you're saying about the spiritual. Like we're not judging. Like people need to do what's best for them. But growing up, I'm just going to be honest, and you've obviously heard me say this. There was so much like thing about sex. It's like. Now, remember, when you lose your virginity, it was like, I thought fireworks were going to go off. I was going to be crowned. My life was never going to be the same. I was going to be finally a woman. Like, it was like this big, grand thing. And I had to say for the first time, I was like, huh? (laughs) Now, look, I, I was in a relationship. I was with the guy for four years. But when I first had sex with him, I was young. I was legal when I was young. And um, and so it was like, 
I didn't know who I was. I didn't even know my body. I didn't know. And so I was like, people have made out for it to be very grand and I didn't feel it. So then I dismissed sex. I was like, clearly it's not for me. Like, it's not that, it's like, yeah, maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. And it wasn't until I met you that I was like, holy shit, this is what people are talking about. And so to your point, I'm not telling people to go out and just sleep with anyone. But man, when I met you, I was like, I knew what I had. I knew what I had. But what if I hadn't? What if I had stayed with that guy? The spark, the electricity, the, the intimacy, the, the passion you can have from sex. It wasn't there. But I wouldn't have known that it was missing if I hadn't then had the experience and then met you. So that is exactly a wonderful example of why I think that one, I love the idea of people waiting, like having sex young, I think is a high risk endeavor. Yeah. So if anything I've said comes across like that, definitively not. Um, I think people should really wait until, the, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got about sex was until you're able to talk about it openly, don't have it. <laughs> and I thought, whoa, that's really good advice. And so being able to talk with the person that you wanna have sex about having sex, um, mm -hmm. that's a good sign about whether or not you're ready. Um, but so many people, the first experience they have is, you know, awkward or confusing or whatever. And it gives you, if you, that's the only person you ever have sex with, it doesn't give you any sort of comparison. And there's, there's just exploration and learning and it's uh, like all that stuff. It, when done safely, physically and emotionally, when done safely, physically and emotionally, that exploration, I think, is, uh, is transformative. And I am a serial monogamist. I have, that's not entirely true. I have experienced and enjoyed brief encounters. But I find if I don't connect, that's a much better way of explaining it. I need to connect with people to enjoy sex. So like I want trust, which was, again, my mom gave me this extraordinary insight into sex, which is for, I forget what she said about guys, but it was basically like guys need a place to have an orgasm and, or a partner outside of masturbation, obviously, and women need trust. Mm. And I thought, whoa, like that was so weird to me, mm. the thought that women needed trust to have an orgasm. And what a key insight that was. And so I'm talking about you're connected with somebody. You're in a stable relationship. This is somebody that you trust. Um, but then from there, where you can go and explore and the things that you can learn, it's, it is amazing and it's extraordinary. And while I did not set out to um, learn about sex by having multiple partners, I am so grateful that I did. So I actually think a massive part of it, like in general, is just compatibility, right? Are you compatible in the way you like to live your everyday life? Are you compatible in um, the belief system that you have on whether you want a family or not? Are you, right? Like everything becomes a compatibility and a communication. And if you're not compatible to me on the sex side of it, like that's such a huge part of what makes a relationship for me and you, like feeling that electricity, working on it, making sure we always keep that spark alive it's so freaking important and if you never have it from the beginning i don't know like there's a that's a massive component that would be missing there's also ways of like flavors of sex life maybe is the right way to think about it and finding enough common ground because over time you're going to shape each other and you're going to find the right. things you like and you're each going to like share and try new things and all of that is a wonderful part of a healthy sex life but there is sort of a baseline of like what we enjoy are we into like more adventurous stuff are we more vanilla are we um frequency like there's so many different aspects Ooh, of a frequency. sex life to line up so right it didn't even occur to me, but that's like one of the biggest things of like, I hear a lot about people who are like, you know, guys will usually want it more, women usually want it less. And so they end up over the years, you hear people complain they haven't had sex in over a year or two years. And it's like, we talk about it all the time. And in fact, if you don't mind me bringing it up, 
even when I was really sick with my health, because I, I know, and we've discussed sex so much, I know how important sex is to you, that with my gut health, and when it was really bad, that was one thing that because we'd already established an open discussion about sex, I came to you and I'm like, babe, because I physically couldn't have sex for a while, I was like, are you okay? Like, is there anything I can do to help? Do you need more porn? Like, do you need toys? Like, but that was very important because I, we'd had the discussion. So now imagine a couple that hasn't had the discussion about sex, that doesn't understand their differences on wants and needs. And so then it comes a situation where maybe one of them gets sick and then the other person is feeling completely neglected and not even thought of but not necessarily being out of like just neglect, just being out of like, I didn't even think about it because I didn't realize he wanted it. But I knew how much you were going, being affected by my gut health because we discussed the importance of sex between us. Yes, and just to wrap that one up though, in that moment, it's like, hey, your partner's going through what they're going through. Yeah. And if you can't sort yourself out, then there are bigger issues. And that's amazing on both sides. I think it's just important to mention both. Yes. Now, bringing it back to sex before marriage, um, just sort of wrapping the idea up is when, when the conditions are right for a sexual relationship, to me, the things that you will learn about yourself, what you like, the nature of sex itself is so profound that having a level of um, experience and exploration, I think is, is truly rewarding but even even just sticking to the one point with that person let's just assume for a second that you're only going to have sex with that person um i would still do it before i got married as like an emergency backstop just it's like such an important part of the relationship to make sure that there is long-term viability to the sex life because it is you're getting into life as a biological experience and understanding the hormonal cascade. Like um, Jamie Wheel wrote a new book and it's about, it's called the um, Recapturing the Rapture. And a huge section of the book is dedicated to sex because of the neurochemistry mm -hmm. and how what they're finding is one of the most potent antidepressants is an orgasm. And that so many positive neurochemical states have that have like signatures that are almost identical to post-orgasm um mdma um some of the the treatments that they're using for the the co chemical cocktails that they use for like treating intractable depression all mimic essentially post-orgasm hmm. and so like making sure that your sex life is high functioning is so important and it can just be a misfire all right, so let's say they wait for marriage. God bless them. Cool. Now it's about toolkit of That's how do we process say, yeah. through. Well, you... It's all about communication. It's all about not being embarrassed and not being judgmental because inevitably, and this is the very reason I'm telling people to experiment, inevitably there are going to be things that you're excited by the other person's not interested in and vice versa. There could be frequency things that you guys are going to have to work through. Um, Fetishes. Yeah, sure. Like you elaborate. <laughs> like I'm not sure where you're headed. I'm just saying, if someone's got a fetish, you'd. I think it's important to say that openly to discuss. God, now we're we gonna get into like the whole. It, fetishes are interesting, man. <laughs> I don't know if this is where no, the but fetishes ends, but... like at a thirty thousand foot view are really fascinating. So I'm I'm glad you're bringing this up because to the point about like without judgment, figuring out what the other person is into, like fetishes are one of the few things that appear to be immutable, meaning something gets locked in when it's, so we talk about the age, age of imprinting. Imprint, yeah. So in, in the 11 to 15, there is some weird thing where your brain opens itself up to lifelong imprinting and one of, and meaning in that period, like, it's why they say you'll never have friends like you had when you were 12. Mm -hmm. There's there's just something about that period of time that the, the hobbies that you'll develop, they develop in that time. Mm -hmm. Your favorite authors, filmmakers, movie genres, all of it lock in in that period. And one of the things in that cascade is fetishes. And so there's this weird thing where the brain opens itself up to locking onto something and then it stays. And so while you may discover new things that you like, 
it's usually in a fairly narrow band and that band gets gets imprinted in that period and so not knowing what the other person's like real like the things that they're really into can be uh it can be sad because when you find somebody that shares right. your interest exactly. it's like oh my god i never knew it could be this amazing exactly that's what my point of it saying is or just being able to be with somebody that doesn't judge you for a fetish that you may have and if you if you don't have sex beforehand if you don't discuss it especially then you may end up in a relationship with someone that is that may be the antithesis of what sexually turns you on or you know and so it's like well what do you do with that so i just think like as an overall it's not about like yeah get one in it's about you know like making sure that you are completely compatible on the same page aligned very open um beforehand yes and just as a final button of course, there's going to be, and I mentioned this earlier, there's going to be um, growing together. You guys are going to at first like, oh, I'm not really into that. But over time, you like see how much the other person loves it and and you can evolve together. So this is like anything in a relationship. There, there's a mm. foundation mm. that you want to mm. make sure is there and is solid. But then, of course, beyond that, it's going to be communication. It's going to be trying new things. It's going to be experimenting together. And without question, the greatest sexual journey I have been on has been with you. Mm. And so time to get, like my number one value in a relationship is a shared existence. So hopefully people do not mistake that I am um, only interested in novelty. The thing that I've given my entire life to is the experiment of what happens when you stay with one person. Um, That's your experiment? <laughs> why do you say it like not that? not sexy at all. That's interesting. To me, that is so powerful. It's so unromantic. That's, I have to find better words to say it in a way that you hear what I mean. Because what I mean is so, <laughs> like, it's like I've given my whole life to the idea of, like, through ups and downs, through sickness and health, through poverty, wealth, everything, all of it to do it with one person is yeah, such an extraordinary cool, journey. And that's way better. Just don't use the word experiment. Um, because it... It, it feels clinical. And so everyone, this Words is, matter. So the, I'm actually glad that we're talking about this. And you said earlier, like people, like this is actually how we talk. This is actually how we talk. You say a word, rubs me the wrong way, makes me feel a certain way. But I know you don't mean it, which is why I'm correcting you. I know exactly what you mean. But that's why I was like, hey, experiment doesn't work on me. It doesn't feel romantic. And I like, I know. You're which you're now revealing your value system. Yeah. I don't need it to be romantic. Yeah. I need it to be powerful. Yeah. And so hearing <laughs> that what you need in that moment, obviously was an unmet need. I wouldn't have said it if it were Valentine's Day or our anniversary, wouldn't be like, I'm so glad we're running this experiment. <laughs> but at the same time, that really matters to me. And so I'm, while I'm understanding you and I could now steel man your position, it doesn't mean it changes the way that I feel. Like that means something to me. It means yeah. a lot to me. And I, just as it's critical that I understand where you're coming from, it's important that you understand where I'm coming from and why that, the way that I have framed it matters to me. So if you're speaking to me and want to be understood, that you would need to have an equal um, understanding and respect for how but I that's interesting though, because in your reframing of it, and I was like, oh, that's much better. Did you feel like I was changing your the way that you see it? Yes. And when you said corrected, I was like, the hair on the back <laughs> of my neck stood up. I was like, say what? So you helped me understand your position. And that, that really is super powerful. And in that, I want to make sure, because as I have said many times, communication is about what you say. It's about what the other person hears. And so I need to know how to get the emotional response so that you feel like when I say that we're running this grand experiment, that you feel this sense of wonder and grandeur and like, oh my God, but I can't use those words because you won't feel what I feel. Yeah. So for me to get you to feel it, I need to understand what the like trigger words are for that same neurochemical cascade. And then I can make sure that I get us on the same page. But it does mean something to me for you to also take the time to step in my shoes. Yeah, and I think that this is actually perfect in real time that people can see how we work through things because I totally hear what you're saying. It's 
because you've given me context of what you actually mean, now I actually like the word experiment. And like, as you were talking, I was like, oh, instead of our anniversary, it'd be a happy experimental day. Um, but like, that's how I can go from, hang on a minute, that actually is, I don't like that word. You've made me, it feel unromantic to me hearing you out, to then you hearing me out, re rewording it so that I can hear what you actually mean in my language. Right. And then me coming over to your side and going, okay, I actually hear what he's saying. I don't take it offense. You can see now I'm laughing. So that's how we take something where, if I didn't have said anything, imagine time after time after time yeah. after time for the next three years, you keep calling our, our marriage an experiment. Yes, that's so I'd, powerful. Like in three years, I would be like, I'm just a fucking experiment. Like, see, he doesn't right. love me. Oh my God, that's so good. That's so powerful. And there you have it, guys. That's how we work through shit. <laughs> and we got to put that last bit on the loop, that, that way that people let that resentment build up. That's amazing. Well, we started with talking about whether or not you should have sex before marriage, and we ended up on fetishes and all <laughs> kinds of crazy shit. But hopefully it added value to your life. And if it did, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. And until next time, my friends, build an amazing relationship. Peace out. Yay.